They pick 26th overall in the upcoming draft for which they are the host team. I'm going to Cleveland, Ohio for the NFL draft next week. And the head coach of the 11-5 and Cleveland Browns after his first highly successful year as HC of the Cleveland Browns, Kevin Stefanski, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, Rich. Good to be with you. Good to be with you as well. Let's let's get started about, uh, I, I, I don't know how often we've ever gotten a chance to speak, um, but uh, how many Penn Quakers are there in the National Football League right now? Kevin, do you know? The, ox- the oxymoronic fighting Quakers, That's... that is, uh, Rich. <laughs> yeah, not, Very well done. Not many of us. Not yeah. many of us. Uh, we've had a couple players over the years, uh, and I'm proud of those guys, but I, I think there need to be more. Yeah, you know what? Because we always hear about you know Ryan Fitzpatrick being the Harvard guy. You know, you're 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 a Penn guy. You're a Penn Quaker. Hey, I, I you know I played against Ryan Fitzpatrick. Did you really? If you can believe this. Tell oh, me yeah. about that one. What do you got for me on that? Uh, great player. Uh, he, I'm talking about Ryan now. Yeah. Obviously, no, okay. great player. Yes, was so athletic for that league. It, 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 you know, you watch him move around against the NFL. Imagine what he was doing against guys that look like me. Uh, he was a threat to run it, could throw it, just an uh, awesome player. Now, if I'm not mistaken, were, were you a defensive back? Were you, were you, were, you, were, I wa- you were. I, I was. I was a safety. I was very, very good at, at playing very, very deep. That was, that was what I was good at. <laughs> did, did Fitzpatrick look you off at one point? Did, is that what he did at one point? Or, or is it still the Fitzpatrick we see all the time that you, you actually had tight coverage and you said, screw it, he threw into that window anyway? What happened? It was it was fifth magic back then. Uh, I will tell you, we we beat him, so I feel good about that. Get okay. the victory, yes, a couple times versus him, but uh, but it was n- in no way was it Brian Fitzpatrick versus me because uh, that that was advantage crimson. <laughs> Kevin Stefanski here uh, on the Rich Eisen show. Okay, and uh, your dad is an NBA executive currently for the Pistons as well. Did you grow up, uh, I guess, in a basketball household? In a way, yeah, we Kevin? did. Yeah, I mean, Philly's a, a great basketball city, great high school basketball, great college basketball. So, mm-hmm. growing up, I spent many a Saturday at the Palestra, uh, just different games, going to different practices for for college ball as a kid. And then my dad got in the NBA uh, later on in his career, uh, so so he was has been kind of bouncing around uh, the NBA for the last it feels like twenty five thirty years. So. Uh, he gives me a, a different perspective, uh, you know, that sports perf- perspective mm-hmm. where winning and dying, uh, winning and losing, you're dying with every game. He, he can appreciate that from a fo- from a football guy. If I told that kid growing up in that household he was going to be the head coach of the Cleveland Browns one day, what, what would you have said, Kevin? What would have that happened? Would never have believed it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it definitely was not the plan. Uh, at, at no point did I set out and say that, Rich. I, I wanted to be Reggie White when, when, I, when, when I was growing up. Uh, so sh- shortly thereafter, I realized that wasn't happening. But uh, it, it's one of those things that, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to, to have this role, something I try to do really well and, and take, you know, as a steward of, of the team and, and take good care of this team. Uh, for our fans. So is it Childress who gave you a break? Is that how that worked in terms of getting you from Penn to the NFL? How did that happen? Yeah, back in that's the day? exactly right. So I, I took an internship with the Philadelphia Eagles in the summer of 2005, which was the Eagles summer, if you can remember, T.O. Uh, doing sit-ups there in the driveway. <laughs> so I, I, that was a uh, an impactful internship, if you will. And then uh, Coach Childress got the Vikings job that January, and uh, I, he brought me out there with him. So, were you the one? Uh, w- w- what was your role as an intern the summer where T.O. was doing sit ups on the lawn? Andy Reid sends him home. Next question with Drew Rosenhaus. I mean, what's an intern do on that front, Kevin? Yeah, anything and everything. I'm stocking Gatorade uh, in the in the coolers. I'm I'm driving players to and from practice. Uh, coach needed something. I was a gopher. Uh, that, that's how I broke into it. That's how you break into it. What, did you pick anything? I like so. So when you're coaching now, you're the HC now, uh, and, and you're and you're giving directives in any way, shape, or form. Who are you sometimes picking stuff up from that you like? Something comes out of your mouth and you you picked it up from somebody. Would it be Andy Reid? Who would it be? Walk me through your influences before we get to the here and now, Kevin. Yeah, I'm, I'm so lucky in that regard, Rich. I've been around some incredible coaches, and, and Coach Childress was, is a, was a great program builder. If, if you can take yourself back to 2006 at the Vikings, we went 6-10, and 8-8, eight and 10-6, eight, and 12-4. and four. Mm-hmm. Uh, So it just was to watch him operate with the program and then just being around Leslie Frazier, 
who did it a different way, but just a great man, uh, Mike Zimmer, uh, who's, I think, the premier defensive mind in, in the game. And then I was so fortunate enough to be around uh, Pat Shermer, North Turner, Bill Musgrave, and then really uh, in that last year at the Vikings, spend the calendar year with Gary Kubiak was as impactful as they come. Kevin Stefanski, Cleveland Browns head coach here on the Rich Eisen Show. What clicked for you last year? For the for you at the Browns, what do you think clicked in a way that um, yeah that you're appreciative of or surprised you any way, shape, or form, Kevin? Yeah, I think we had a bunch of players, Rich, that that wanted to work, and that's what we put the focus on uh, from the jump. Uh, I felt there were some really good people already in the building when I got here, and then through the draft and free agency and trades, we added a bunch of smart and tough football players. And I think if I'm proud of one thing, it's that the guys went out there and we stuck to the plan and, and really stayed in the moment throughout the season. So, as you know, it's, it's a, it's, it can be a long year. And the best line I've heard is it's not a marathon, it's 16 sprints. And I need to update that to 17 sprints. Right, but you, if, if you if If you treat it as such, which I think we did, I, I think you really put the focus on winning uh, that week, winning one game that week, and I think that's what the guys did. I don't know if you are aware, Kevin Stefanski, but you are going to be the first head coach that Baker Mayfield has enjoyed uh, at his side uh, or attached to the hip with for consecutive years since Bob Stoops in Oklahoma. The guys constantly had change, you know, and then when Lincoln Riley showed up, he left, you know, to go into the pros, and – uh, I am wondering what you and he clicked about last year in a manner that we are seeing him play his best football since coming to the pros. Yeah, when I think of Baker, and, and I talked to him yesterday, and, and when I think about him as, as a player, he's a gym rat. He wants to get better. And whatever you give him, he takes coaching. There, there were things that Alex Van Pelt, our offense coordinator did with Baker last year and challenged him and changed some things in his footwork. And, and we pushed him and, and probably put him under center than he has more than he has been, uh, at least in recent years. So he, he was so open to coaching. And then just the way he grinds and his preparation, that's the thing that a lot of people don't see that, that I really appreciate about Baker. And it's something uh, that I think he'll continue to do. I don't, I don't ever get the sense – from Baker that he's satisfied. I think he wants to continue to grind day in and day out. So then what's your what's your envision what's your vision for his next steps in 2021? What do you got for me on that? Yeah, I think I look back to our first year together. Uh, he got better as the season wore on and it it, it was a, a combination of things. I mean, the credit goes to Baker uh, for putting the work uh, in but we also streamlined a lot of the concepts of what we were doing, found out what he was comfortable because we really were learning about each other uh, as we went. So I feel like our jumping off point in year two is so different from where we started. Uh, so that, that's where he, he will always go into a season, and I think he would agree. He wants to take another step. And I think he took a step last year, and, and we're working real hard to make sure he takes another step this year. Well, what specific can you give me for a next step? in terms of development mechanics, uh, recognition. Yeah. And what, what do you got for me on that? Well, front? I would tell you, Rich, with all of these guys, we meet with them and, and we give them a list of things that he needs to work on. Some of them are simple, like you mentioned, mechanics. It might be footwork in the gun. It could be his uh, carrying out his fake. could be specific uh, stats, like let's get that completion percentage up. Uh, up around 70, and I think those type of things happen when you employ the check down when you need to. So it's really just a total maturation of the player, and I think it's something that he really is embracing. Is it uh, also, again, just rumor, you can confirm it, is it true that your coaching style is so uh, deep and unique that you had uh, aliens and UFOs tell him this personally to try and confirm your coaching? At all, (laughs) Kevin, is that true? I I haven't addressed that yet. I'll see if that comes up. Uh, but I read that as everybody else. <laughs> but, hey, man. hey I, I can't. I wasn't there, so I can't tell you what happened. Okay, yeah, okay. Just wondered if you've actually broached that subject, or you sent them to him to say, "Hey, get that completion percentage up." And he's like, "Oh my God!" You know, like I don't know if that's your style, Kevin. No, that's yeah. that's not a bad idea. I'm always thinking about new ways to reach our players. Next level. So let me give that some thought. You're welcome. Is all I have to say on that. Kevin Stefanski here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. How is Odell? What do you got for me on that front, on Odell yeah. Beckham's recovery here? 
Odell's doing well. I talk to him often. Uh, he's he's working very hard, as as I'm sure everyone has seen through some of his videos. Uh, he, he's in a really good place. I think he's he's progressing nicely, and I'm excited to. Uh, finally get him back here on campus at some point. Well, I don't know if you're aware of this narrative that was quite popular during your 11-win regular season and uh, and the playoff run that you went on last year, Coach, but I'd love to give you the floor on the narrative that your offense is better without Odell Beckham. How do you respond to that? Yeah, that, that was the narrative, Rich. I got asked that often. I think our offense got better, period, as the season wore on, and I think that, again, is a natural evolution of a new scheme, new coaches with new players, I, I, we better improve as the season wore on. Uh, I think we took a big jump after at the bye week. We had eight games last year and then had a bye, and we looked very hard at what we were good at, what we weren't so good at. And, and like good coaches do, uh, I think our coaches did a nice job of identifying some things that we wanted to do differently. So I think we just got better because that's how it goes in, in a season when, when you have a new scheme. Uh, to say you take a player of Odell's caliber off your roster and you somehow get better, I don't buy into that at all. So was there is there, is there anything, too, that Baker m- might have, uh, without Odell, there – felt less compelled to force uh, an individual the ball in any way, shape, or form. What about that narrative? What about yeah, that? I, I don't buy it. Uh, we, we work really hard with the quarterbacks in, in terms of their reads. I mean, it, it's what you try as a quarterback coach, uh, you try to eliminate the gray for the quarterback. So he, he has reads based on the coverage, and the ball goes where the ball goes. And I think we're very fortunate to have on our offense and, and that you know a bunch of guys returning – uh, we have players that at, uh, I feel strongly about at every level, at running back, at tight end, at wide receiver. So uh, o- Odell adds a, obviously a huge element of uh, an explosive nature to our offense. He's he's at f- front of mind as we put our scheme together. But to force the ball to somebody, I think, uh, is not something that we'll do here because it's not good for the overall offense. So I don't, I just don't buy that aspect of it. But I also don't want to shortchange uh, Odell's uh, ability to affect the game uh, week in and week out. A few more minutes left with Cleveland Browns head coach Kevin Stefanski here on the Rich Eisen Show. The acquisition of Jadavian Clowney, does that take pressure off of getting that edge rusher where you're so deep down in the draft at 26 overall? Or would you choose another one there? How does this affect your draft strategy? Kevin's defense. Yeah, I think we're, we're, we're open for improving the team uh, at a bunch of positions, Rich. Uh, we're excited about Jadavion and what he can bring to that front. Uh, but as, as you well know, you can never have enough DNs. You can ne- never have enough linebackers, corners. I mean, you need good players uh, on the defense period. So whether we go defense or offense, I, I just think we're going to be able to sit there and, and allow the board to come to us and say we have to take a good player that's going to help us and help us in year one and then also help us uh, you know, in year four, five, and six. So I, I think the things we've done in free agency, certainly uh, we feel good about adding to our team. Uh, we added a lot of players to our defense, but we just feel like we need to add more, more depth. Uh, that, that will allow us to, to play with, with different uh, units, if you will, and, and have different personnel on the field. But I don't think it precludes us from doing anything there at 26. Well, I mean, all I hear is how weak this draft is at the defensive tackle position. And Sheldon Richardson uh, appears to have been a cap casualty with the signing of, of Clowney. Is it possible you could bring him back in Cleveland? You know, I'm, I'm hopeful. Uh, Sheldon gave us incredible production last year, played through injuries, and what I remember about last year as we're going on that run and we needed to win some games to get in, uh, Sheldon was at the forefront of that. And, and he had not been to the playoffs before in his career. So he took great pride in what he was able to accomplish uh, on our defense and, and propelling us in, into those playoffs. So I'm hopeful, Rich. You know, this is a business. Uh, I get to sit and look at it from the head coach chair, and, and I tell our general manager, hey, why can't we keep everybody? <laughs> and, you know, he's smart enough to realize, and, and he has a plan. Uh, but but it, it's part of the, the nature of the cap. Um, you, you sometimes have to make hard decisions. But, yes, I am hopeful uh, that, that a scenario like that could, could happen. Last one for you, Coach Stefanski. Um, I pound the table from this desk and uh, on this particular subject, and – 
Uh, I've been with the NFL Network since 2003, so I know uh, changing rules in the NFL is all about consensus building. Mm -hmm. In last year's playoff loss in Kansas City, you were having a heck of a drive to close the end of the first half. Ball gets popped loose. Good hit by the defense, although it might have been an illegal hit. But ball pops free. Had it rolled out of bounds, you'd have gotten the ball right there. Instead, it just rolls into the end zone and out of bounds. You lose the football. I hate that rule with a passion and the fury of a million sons. Can I count on your vote to get rid of this rule in the National Football League, Kevin Stefanski? You know, Rich, I never thought about the rule. In, in, I knew what the rule was. I know right. how penalizing it is when it happens. Right. So I just focused on coaching the guys not to reach it over, unless, especially in a crowd, unless it was fourth down or something. So I think it's something that I would support us looking at. <sighs> um, but I know this. It, that was one play in that ball game, and and I know I know it was an impactful play, but I, I could pick out 10 others that, that I wish the result was different as well. No, I understand. you got to play better than the refs. Ref, too, uh, Coach. I, I, I understand. But I just don't understand why it, if the ball had gotten popped out and rolled directly out of bounds to the right, you get to keep it. But because it rolls a little bit further and through the end zone, you don't. And the Kansas City defense gets bailed out because of it. I would love to get rid of that rule, give you the ball maybe on the 20 yard line and call it the same down and distant you know the same uh, uh down and now that's the distance to the goal you have a reverse touchback but at least you get a shot to the end zone or get a chance to kick a field goal out of it you don't get zero and say sorry for the effort go back to your locker room i hate that i, I think it will ha- if if we frame this as the rich eyes and resolution yes sir i think it's got a chance you know coach you 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 uh you're very good at what you do not just coaching but i like your brain from the neck up my brother's a wharton school of business graduate so maybe that's something too um and you know and you know how to give me an answer while uh stroking my ego well done <laughs> a plus i i appreciate hey, it coach you can always tell a michigan man but you can't tell him too much <laughs> Is that a, is that a compliment? Is that I'm trying you, to you, Yeah, think you got to think long and hard about it, but you can use that one. <laughs> Coach Stefanski, much appreciated. Let's do this more often and uh, I hope to uh, run into you uh, next week, although I'm sure you'll be in your draft room, but uh, I'll be in your town. I do hope to see you. Yeah, excellent. Excited for everybody to get out here to Cleveland and and put our city, uh, showcase it to a global audience. Appreciate the time here. Kevin Stefanski, much appreciated. That's the Cleveland Browns head coach here on the Rich Eisen Show. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.